Hey guys, welcome. We're excited. Look, we're moving up. We have microphones. Jean, say hey. Hello. Now you can hear Gene. He's so soft spoken. Now you can hear him. All right, so do y'all remember this mirror? Do you remember how much I got this for? It was like five bucks. <laughs> got this mirror for five dollars. And you're going to find mirrors like this a lot of times now. The thrift store that we got this at is called Haven House. Mm -hmm. On 98. On 90, Highway 98 in Santa Rosa mm -hmm. Beach, Florida. So we had a house in Memphis that we did a red lacquered mirror on a black and white toile paper, and it was mm -hmm. dynamite. Mm -hmm. And I thought, how fun would it be to do this in a beautiful blue lacquer? Now, let me, let me tell you why. That when you look at a piece of furniture, you want to be thinking, what do I do to it? Like, it's a process that I go through, and this is why, like in my old world finishing course, how I teach you having that repertoire of finishes that you can look at it and go, okay, this would look really good in this. If I just brushed on some miracle paint on this, it wouldn't be near as spectacular if we did it in lacquer. The lacquer is like you're pushing a yin and yang. This is a very traditional mirror. What company do you think probably made this? I'm asking you now, and I should have asked you before we went live. There's no, there's no name. I don't see any markings. You know, so many of the mass furniture manufacturing companies made this, what they called a broken pediment um, with the finial design. So it could be, you know, it could be American Drew. It could be Thomasville. It could be uh, Harden. It could be just Ethan Allen. Ethan Allen. So we thought it would be we thought it would be fun to be able to do the lacquer. So those of you that don't know, a lacquer is normally a three-part process. And Jean is a lacquer expert. So I am interviewing you how we need to do this and do it correctly. Right. So normally we have a primer, the color, and then the bright idea that goes on top. Yes. Do I need all three on this project? No, on the primer, so many people think, oh, that's primer because that's for iron, for metal. No, this is actually, it is a sanding sealer, which is a soft lacquer. What that does is if you've got raw wood, it will seal that raw wood. If you've got a grainy wood, it will seal up that grain, fill that grain so that the lacquer will be smooth. And of course, the smoother the lacquer, the more shiny the lacquer is because of that reflective value. And in this case, this has been lacquered. It's a probably a maple that they used, um, or birch, well, maple. A lot of them use maple, and then they put a cherry finish on it. But, and I, I'm never uh, uh, more amazed at the, of just the obsessive of, use of the you might not be able to see it the fly specking on the furniture from the 70s and the 80s they just used a ton of fly specking on these so you're saying mm -hmm. if somebody has a piece of furniture like this at home mm -hmm. that it's not necessary for them to do the primer if there's already a really good consistent mm -hmm. overall the same coat or sealant gloss. over it yes and like i say it is smooth it's not grainy it's been sealed with whatever uh, finish they've used, this top coat that's on there. So we're not going to need to use the primer, so that'll save you time, it'll save you a little money, and we can just clean it with our clean slate and let that clean slate uh, dry off, evaporate off, and we'll be ready to go with our lacquer. I want to revisit this real quickly. So mm -hmm. when do I use this? You want to use that if it's raw wood to seal the wood. You want to use it even if this is, let's say this was mahogany and the and it had a top coat. It's been stained. It's been sealed with a top coat. But because it's grainy, we want to fill that grain in because we want a smooth surface. And we'd use the primer as our uh, grain filler on that. Okay. So, I chose the color. This is, Belgian blue is one of the prettiest lacquers that we have. Blue is in, like, look, look, look at
at the color we both have on. Well, look at your shirt. We we wear blue all the time. We love blue. What about and the ocean? What, so, and we love the fact of interiors being white and blue and different colors and values of gray and cream. Mm -hmm. So we thought it would be really fun to do this in blue lacquer. So tell us real quickly what you've done to get ready to spray it. So, of course, this being a mirror, we've got the piece of glass mirror there. What I did, I took some of our painter's tape and I went around and created a border around the mirror. And then I cut a piece of just this um, craft paper a little bit smaller than the mirror. And what I'm going to do is, you see, I've started tacking that piece up to hold it in place. And then I'll come back with another strip of our uh, painter's tape and go around and tape that down. And that's going to protect our mirror so I'm not having to go back and scrape all the lacquer from the mirror. So the only thing we need to do to be ready is to clean it with clean slate. Mm -hmm. And then allow it to dry. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to start, because this has a really good finish on it already mm -hmm. and it's even, we're going to go in and start with our color. Right. And there's no chips. There's no uh, nail holes. Nothing that has to be filled. So there's no um, uh, pre pre finish work that we've got to do. We just need to clean all of the, you can see there's a bunch of dust on, on here. And there's probably pledge and other stuff so we just want to get all that off before we start the lacquer process all right let's do it all right we're ready for our lacquer we're doing it outside for a couple of reasons one when we spray this lacquer because it is solvent based you want to be in a well ventilated area now we may have a little issues we've got a breeze coming through which you want to be able to block that breeze off if normally if i had some big cardboard uh, i could set it up and just kind of block the wind off i'd don't have that but i may end up trying to figure something out if i if if need be one of the things you'll notice let me show you over here look how i did this i placed it up on some quart cans to get it up off the table so it makes it uh, a little easier for me to spray the sides and that's where i'm going to start i'm going to spray all of the sides first because when we spray we're going to be spraying we always spray away from us so we don't get over spray if i start over here and work my way towards me i'm going to be throwing um, lacquer or over spray into the fresh lacquer and what's going to happen is i might as well just be throwing sand in the wet lacquer and it's just going to be rough there will not be any sheen to it whatsoever so the first thing i'm going to do is again i'm going to spray the sides first I want to spray, I'm just going to go all the way around and spray these sides before I start on the flat parts. I'm spraying about four to six inches away. Right here, I'm just looking for good coats. I don't want to get it too heavy. Again, about four to six inches. I don't want to go too fast either because if I go too fast, all I'm doing is spraying aerosol. I'm not getting any product on the... Got a little finial here. Get our little cutout of the pediment. I'm not worried about what I'm throwing up on top here on the flat surface because I'm going to come back and be blending all of that in. Just want to make sure I've got this pediment. All right. All right. So now we went all the way around the edge and we got that. Now I'm going to be working on the flat surface. So again, we want to shoot about four to six inches. Always moving. I don't want to stay in one spot. All right, now we're continuing to spray our flat area.
spray paint so you just can't keep you don't spray it like hairspray you have to do you have to do even coats All right, we got our first coat of Belgian blue lacquer on. You can see it turned out uh, surprisingly well to be out here with all of the the wind blowing, and uh, so we're we're I'm I'm grateful. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take some 320, or you can use 400 grit sandpaper, and I'm lightly going to sand this before I put my second coat of lacquer on. Why do I do that? Well. The smoother the surface is before applying the lacquer, the more reflective value we get from the lacquer and the shinier it's going to look. So I'm going to just lightly sand it. What it does, it just uh, evens out everything. It also, if there's any little raised areas, uh, it will reduce those. It'll smooth those out. It'll lower them and we'll get a much smoother surface so all i'll do is just take some of my and i think this is 320 and i'm just going to lightly sand it doesn't take much pressure you can see i've got a little gritty stuff in here that was there prior to me lacquering but that's okay i'll get it out with this and it'll cover up with the next next coat and again, I don't have to put a lot of pressure on here. I'm just running it. Over the surface. And again, you can see, if there's any rough areas, you'll be able to see those and you'll be able to go in and sand those out. All right, we're back for our final uh, coat then this will be clear. Now what we've done, we've got two coats of Belgium blue on our mirror. Now what we did was we put one coat on, we lightly sand it with either 320 or 400 grit sandpaper. Then we will come back and did a second coat of Belgium blue and let that dry. We lightly sand it with some 320 or 400 grit sandpaper. Now we're ready for our clear. Now why do we need clear? Clear is not needed to seal this. What we're using the clear for is just to give it more depth. We want to have more depth to our lacquer. So that's why we use the clear to go on um, on top of the lacquer that we've used, which happened to be Belgian blue. So we've, we've got it shaken up and we're ready to go. Notice we're in our little spray booth tent that we set up. It's almost too small, but it does help to uh, be able to uh, protect us against the, the breeze that's going on out here. As you know, if you've used lacquer, you cannot use it in a windy or breezy area because you'll get a lot of overspray. So here we go. Again, we're about three to four to six inches on our lacquer. All right, now we're here with our finished product. Remember, this was the uh, great find at the Haven House Thrift Store, Santa Rosa Beach, Highway 98, for five dollars. Um, could have probably gotten it for less, but we just didn't want to browbeat them over over that. But uh, for five dollars, we got this uh, kind of that federal period or Queen Anne period broken pediment design, um, you know, your traditional mahogany finish that it was in. And we used the Belgian blue lacquer over this. 
And the steps were we cleaned it with clean slate. The nice thing was we did not have any uh, anything that needed to be repaired or patched. Uh, because this was a smooth grain and sealed, we didn't use the primer, the lacquer primer. So we were able to start with the the lacquer itself. So we did the we did the uh, clean slate, got it nice and clean. We taped off our mirror, our glass, so that we wouldn't get any overspray on it. Then we sprayed a coat of the Belgian brew lacquer, let it dry. You know, depending on the temperature, you know, give it 35, 45 minutes. Uh, the longer, the better. You can let it dry hours before you sand it. Then we did a light sand of 320 grit, or you can use 400 grit. The reason we don't use any more of a coarse grit like a 220 or a 120 is because the scratch marks will show up when we lacquer it. So we just used the 320 uh, grit. We went over it. We sprayed a second coat of Belgian blue over the whole thing. Again, we let that dry. Then we came back and sanded with the 320 grit sandpaper, just smoothing everything out cleaned off the sanding residue and we put one coat of clear lacquer over the whole piece to give it some depth and some clarity in the color.